what we've done is we've added a bunch of new features. Absolutely amazing. .NET is a general purpose framework for building all of these types of applications. You can be productive and code and build your UI quickly. What? My folks, how are you? And the home screen shows you the sauna temperature. And you can see down here on the lower right, it now knows the garage door is open. Let's jump into the code now. The .NET community has just always been a great community to be a part of. This really is a state-of-the-art technology. You can actually download this right now. And get right to the code. Build some new applications on .NET Core. Please have a great conference. Ask us lots of questions on Twitter. We're going to be there all week. Yay! Hello, everybody! Hey. Happy November. Welcome to yet another .NET Maui community stand-up. If you don't know already, .NET Conf, the best and always virtual, even before things were virtual, um, conference day long, two day long this year, with a student zone on Monday. It's happening next week. It's happening on Tuesday. Dave and I will be there in person together, causing trouble, as we do. <laughs> I will also be hosting on Tuesday, apparently. I don't know why they're letting me do that. It's a horrible idea, but it'll be fun. Um, I'm Maddie. I work on the .NET Maui team. I am a PM product manager, is what we call ourselves now. Um, and I'm here with the usual. Hello, David Ortnow, product manager, Xamarin, .NET Maui, all those things. And we're here, we have a special guest this week, this month. It's Michael. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> you want, do you want to... Uh, Introduce yourself. So, in your introduction. <laughs> I, I don't know. We didn't. We didn't plan that one out, did we? No, we didn't. No. <laughs> Do you need to plan how to introduce yourself? Is that uh, like no, 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 no. I think I can introduce myself pretty easily. Hi, Michael Cummings. I'm a software engineer on the uh, Maui tooling team. So all the good stuff that's inside of Visual Studio. Yeah, Michael has been on our team for three years now. Yeah, Maybe? roughly three years. Yeah, um, and has worked on a whole bunch of stuff, including. The OG XAML Hot Reload when we first started doing that um, and a bunch of other things related to tooling and now is the kind of main driver, especially from the Maui point, but also across all of .NET for .NET Hot Reload, which is C Sharp Hot Reload, et cetera. Um, yep. And is, well, lives in Boston, is not from Boston, but lives in the Boston area, works in Boston. Austin. Key distinction for Maddie. It's That's like an cool. important distinction. Um, he's from Austin, New York. So it's like a little dicey. What, Patriots fan? So I finally, yep, that's all that matters, as we know. Um, and this is Michael's first ever community stand up. So we're going to try not to scare him off, uh, which is great. And you know, you know, the first time, the first time, Mike, that I met you, Michael, do you like Mike or Michael? I didn't ask you that. Michael. Michael. All right. The first time I met you, I was in the Boston office and I had no idea who you were. Um, <laughs> and this may not be you at all. But my recollection is, who is this guy that's like wearing slacks and a button down yeah. and he's like all businessy, like yeah. he must be like in charge oh, yeah. of something. Um, and the longer you've worked with us, the more casual you've gotten, you've grown a beard out. And uh, I, I think yeah, we've, yeah. I think we've made a good impression on you. I, it took three years for me to stop wearing button down shirts and, and things like that. Uh, <laughs> came from a consulting background, so always had to dress at least one step higher than the client. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's yeah. a good, good advice. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Not, <laughs> but Michael is a long time Microsoft. He had been here probably longer than me and Dave combined. I think he wrote that's... office originally, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. I'm approaching my 10th year though in January. Woo. We're going to get so... you a nice crystal. That's exciting. Yes. Um, yeah. And Michael. I'll bring in 10 pounds of candy important. for the office. So. <laughs> I've never seen that happen. Things. I've never, never well, seen you that. You don't happen. work in an office. So how would you. Yeah. I know. I hear these rumors, <laughs> though. I, I don't know. Yeah. So you got to come to Boston in January. I'm glad to. Glad. To. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Without further ado, let's hop right into this. If this is your first community stand up, um, the way these roll is we do some blogs. We do some sometimes we do PRs. Lately, we've been doing libraries that have Maui support and have updated. So some kind of like community coding stuff. Dave will show you those. And then we turn it over to our guest, Michael, for the second half. Um, and he's going to talk about the metadata update handler Ooh. for .NET Hot Reload, C Sharp Hot Reload, which is basically a way that you can like customize Hot Reload to work better with all your different things. 
Um, it's complicated and cool and it's not actually that complicated when Michael explains it, but I don't explain it well. So that's why we have guests. Um, yes, I already mentioned because you saw the teaser, but in case you just joined, .NET Conf coming out on Tuesday. If you um, are a student or you want to learn .NET, there is the student zone on Monday. It's very cool. And there are all these great speakers like this guy who I don't know, David or whatever. Um, yeah, whatever. Yeah, right? Cool keynote state of Maui, state of web. And the way they've actually done the agenda this year, which I really like is they've divided the agenda into chunks. So keynotes first, and then we're doing like a whole web couple hours. So you'll get your ASP.NET and Blazor. Um, and then we do cloud for a little bit. And then we do the client section, which is us. So you have some very cool talks. Um, me and Dave develop state of Maui. And then um, what's new in Maui desktop. And with Shane, who works on the team, Performance improvements with Maui. I'm with Peppers, who also works on the team and has been on community standups before. I think Shane has too. All great. And then native desktop and mobile using Blazor Hybrid with Alon Lipton and James Montemagno. The James Montemagno. And then um, some customer stories are how we're going to close out the day. Day one. And then day two is kind of a deeper .NET, some more Blazor stuff, some PowerPlat stuff, always cool, some when you eye things updating things, and then more general talks at the end of the day, um, many of which are actually from our community. But one that I would call out is Sweekies, upgrading Xamarin apps to .NET MAUI. Um, that's going to happen Wednesday afternoon. And then there's, oh my gosh, there is day three. Oh my gosh. I thought it was only two days. I'm an idiot. Okay. Day three, starting at midnight Pacific time. Uh, Luis, whose blogs are on here all the time, will be doing um, platform code stuff for Maui. Gerald will be doing the Aloha Community Toolkit. No, the Maui Community Toolkit, not Aloha Kit, which are different, but the <laughs> title is Aloha. Um, and then what was the other one on here that I wanted to say? There's so many. And somehow I've just always scrolled fast enough that I just thought it was two days this whole time. So that's pretty good. Um, oh yeah, net seven on app service. That's cool. Azure static web apps with blazer. That's all cool. And then this is the one building accessible apps with .NET Maui, of course, by the lovely Rachel Kang, who has been on here a couple times now. So three great days of content plus four, if you count Monday. Um, and like I said, I'll be hosting on Tuesday. So you can come harass me on Twitter and I will have to read them and either put them up in front of people or not blogs. Now that I've wasted 10 minutes. Um, first and foremost, you might've noticed Gerald posted a video about this, but Andreas has also done a couple blogs app center. Everyone's favorite is alive and well. Um, I have a weekly meeting with people who work on app center right now and it is awesome. And there's like all these new people and all these people who have been there forever and everyone's really excited and, um, great things are happening with the app center world. So app center diagnostics and analytics, as well as distribution now all work with Maui in pre-release. So there's still some some kinks we need to like smooth out a little bit, and we're still working on the UI test um, portion of it all, and 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 the device lab stuff. We're we're figuring that out right now. But um, Andreas did a walkthrough. You'll notice it still says Xamarin. <laughs> Why? Because we have not changed the string to say Maui yet, but it works. So we will uh, fix that. Um, but yeah, just wanted to show you guys since I know, show you folks since I know a lot of people ask about like, what's going on with App Center? Um, I have two blogs from Okta that are kind of like one after the other. So Okta does authentication and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, but this one's about adding Auth0 to your Maui app and then with Auth0 calling protected APIs from your .NET Maui app. And of course it's asking me for notifications, which I hate if you've been on one of these before. But cool blog, very, um, very long blog. Usually the blogs I feel like are we get are just like short and sweet. This one was very in depth, um, but it has the beautiful sample app that we know and love. If you've ever filed new Maui. Um, and I've had a lot of folks ask about Okta and Auth0. So cool. Um, Leah Marie is one of our favorite community members. You're all our favorites. We love you. Um, but she's always posting blogs. Previously under, um, oh my gosh, what was her old blog? I don't remember. There was a different blog. Not Zam Girl. Zam Girl is Charlene. And 
I don't know. But now she's been writing for the Telerik blog, which is cool. So this one's about e sending emails, um, SMSs, and opening the phone dialer with Maui. Of course, all of the per platform settings. So you need to do your sync, your Android action stuff. Um, and iOS is just some like basic things you want to make sure work. Um, and then just the call functionality, text functionality and all those things. So yeah, I'm reading the chat. Um, Burke is cat. Do you think we'll see a one off apps in our community stand up in the future? I would love to. I think what I want to do is have them on our community stand up at some point. They're kind of in, um, let me put this. Oh yeah. Let me put the URL as too. Sorry. They're kind of in like planning mode. So once they've got their feet on the ground, um, definitely. And whatever you do, don't mention Home Depot. Correct. Michael is my go-to when I have issues in my house and I need someone to tell me what to do. So <laughs> Michael has listened to me complain about installing a sink. And he was like one of the Your first TV. people told. Yep, the TV. I had to go through the wall. Very helpful with handy stuff. Um, including me complaining about Home Depot. So thank you for bringing that up so I can be especially angry. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, this is Jesse Liberty's blog series. So Jesse's cool. He has a podcast and a couple books on Xamarin from back in the day. Um, but he's doing this Forget Me Not blog series. And this one's all about dependency injection, which is a question we've been getting a lot at Maui Talks. Like, how do you do dependency injection with Maui? Like, is that supported? Do you have to get third party things? No, it's literally right there. You can add singletons and transients right in your Maui startup.cs, which is a new file if you're coming from Xamarin, but something that you're totally aware of if you come from the website of .NET. Um, so you can just create these things and they live for the, throughout the whole app and it's great. Um, so yeah, there's six, this is the sixth part of this and it was just posted. So I'm sure, I don't know if part seven will come eventually, but um, part six is here and there's five other parts you can go read. All about .NET MAUI. Um, this is a, an, I always love these blogs that are just like people telling me what MAUI is because I feel like everybody has a slightly different take on how they like to describe it. And so I like this blog, lots of pictures. Um, you know, it calls out a lot of my favorite things for MAUI. So single project, of course. Um, the slim renderers or, or handlers or whatever we call them. The graphics API. Um, asset management. Look at all these things. Look at how great we are. We did so much work. We're awesome. Um, and then, yeah, some other cool things about Maui. So I would definitely give it a scroll if you are new to Maui and you're interested in getting started. Um, and if not, uh, Sync Fusion. They need a do not tell me again because I go onto their website all the time and every time I have to hit cancel. Um, our control vendors, we have a ton of them. They're amazing. Um, this blog actually listed some of them earlier. Where was it? Was it here? Yeah. Um, there's a lot. We're actually talking to a control vendor, I think, after Community Standup, which is very exciting to see how their Maui stuff is going. But um, Sync Fusion and, yeah, I do really need a Chrome extension to block all that. Thanks, Dave. You're right. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'll build. When Maui has a web target, that's what I'll build. A website that blocks other websites. Um, Sorry, I shouldn't be contentious. Dave, when Maui has a web target, Dave's eyes explode. He's like, don't promise anything. Um, yeah, so our control vendors are uh, constantly adding new Maui stuff. Sync Fusion, for example, just came out with the combo box control. Um, there's, you know, if you're unaware with what control vendors are, they basically create really nice controls that you can stick into your app without having to do anything. Um, they build on top of our like basic set of controls and expand them to be more customizable or handle data or blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. So Sync Fusion's coming out with a bunch. Um, Telerik is also coming out with more and more. And with .NET 7, they added um, context menus to desktop apps. So like this, the right click and then the hover and then the right click and then the hover and then the... Red. So Yeah. Um, there are a whole bunch of different ones. Generally, if you're trying to do something that's like really data chart grid heavy, we will send you to a control vendor because uh, sometimes just building those things yourself is annoying. But if you so choose to build them yourself, you totally can and you're welcome to. Um, 
Cool. All right. I will send the links again to the chat while Dave shares his screen and we will turn it over to him to look at some libraries. Whenever you share your screen. There you go. Add to stream. Woo. So, uh, yeah, I think the, uh, you know, vendors like um, Progress and Sync Fusion, Dev Express, Cryl, uh, you know, the benefit is you've paid them. And so you therefore have paid for the right to nag them directly. Whereas you're going to, of course, be much more generous and forgiving with your open source volunteer base, right? Speaking of open source and volunteers, plugin.inapp billing, just a, you know, just a little library with um, <clears throat> 453,000 downloads. What? So it's not nothing. Um, is available and has been for a bit, but it's gotten a bump uh, from James Montemagno. So thank you, James. Um, something I wanted to point out, because this came up in a previous call, we were talking about customer upgrades and what some of the confusions might be as developers such as yourself are going through the process of an upgrade from Xamarin. And uh, if you see a chart like this, and you see a light gray or light blue, depending on your color uh, definitions, um, then that does not mean it is confirmed to be compatible. If you scroll down here, you see this. Um, this is saying that that color indicates it's a computed target framework. Might work. It's kind of a might, right? A very, very suspicious might. You want the dark blues. Um, so make sure that when you're looking for compatibility of any libraries that you're using in your projects, that you're looking for those dark blues. Um, and uh, if you don't find it, you may want to look for an alternative. There are so many alternatives now. I'm seeing a lot of new libraries pop up in the MAUI space in the .NET 6, 7, um, and that's pretty exciting. So let's talk about some more. Uh, one signal, uh, this is for push notifications and the like, now has MAUI compatibility. They previously had a Xamarin SDK. So uh, one of the ways in which uh, SDKs and features come to .NET is through a binding. So there is a, a backing um, or a, a native, if you will, SDK for Apple, for iOS, uh, iOS for Google, for Android. Um, and those are written in, you know, Swift or uh, Objective-C, Kotlin or Java, the wonder twins of mobile development, right? Twins of twins. Um, and so what you end up doing is you create a binding project to it, which invokes those native APIs from .NET. Um, and that's what is a binding project. And essentially, that's what you get when you are using Android and iOS themselves from .NET. So uh, this is you know, yet another encouraging sign to see how companies are able to take an existing Xamarin binding library SDK and bring it to .NET 6, .NET 7. Not that hard. Uh, the, starting is the hardest part. Is that what they say? Is that what mama used to say? Uh, there's a lyric to this somewhere. I don't, I'm not wake enough to, to, to know. I'm just trying to like make Maddie's face go, oh, what's he doing? You did it. Congratulations. Did it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, somebody memed your face when I was show when I was demoing something at the uh, .NET comp focus on Maui. Oh. And you were looking at me like, what in the world is he doing? That is not surprising to me in the leadest. <laughs> yes. Yes. I have, I have children. I know what those looks mean. Uh, do you need to crop an image? Anybody? Uh, here is image cropping from Maui. What's interesting about this one is it also has backing um, SDKs that are native. So not all written in C sharp, but it's using whatever optimizations and uh, pretty advanced, you know, things you can do here uh, from underlying libraries. So anything in the ecosystem for iOS and Android, um, you have a way to use those in .NET. Not going not gonna to claim it's easy. But uh, if you can find the .NET availability, that's the first uh, stop on your journey. Uh, use that. But otherwise, if you find something in the Android iOS ecosystem, you can also use those. So nice little. Uh, and then of course, this is not the only library for cropping and uh, sizing, etc. But 
add that one to your to your list of things to look at. Auth gear, uh, you were mentioned Octo, Octo what? Octo kit, Octo puss. What was it? Octo something. Octa. Octa. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so this is another, uh, let's do some authentication stuff with uh, some servers and whatnot, if I remember correctly. And so this is another Xamarin SDK that is now available for you for .NET 6, 7, and MAUI. So you can see, again, the Xamarin name persists. If you have, if you're a library maintainer or you're looking for libraries to replace, you can't just go on the name, of course. Um, if, if that library continues to support Xamarin, which is .NET Framework 4.8 and before, um, then it makes sense that Xamarin stays in the name. You don't want to disrupt that customer base for your product. Um, but if it's a brand new product for .NET MAUI, of course, Xamarin shouldn't be in the name. MAUI should probably be in the name or not tie yourself to .NET branding names anyway. Uh, definitely a, a good idea. Something to consider. All right, uh, Sentry. Ooh. So this is for you know crash reporting, app monitoring, things like that. I actually uh, had a, a brief exchange this week with Matt, one of their uh, SDK engineers, about their iOS support. Um, uh, Preview 3, I'm told, introduces and or fixes their iOS support for MAUI. So grab the latest preview of Sentry and check out the Android iOS support for MAUI. Should be good to go. Let Sentry know if that's not the case. Um, but we know that this is uh, one of the more popular offerings in that space for mobile applications. Live charts, I need to use this more. Uh, if you're using micro charts and you know, micro charts is kind of just sitting there these days, uh, live charts may be a great open source alternative for you. Uh, it's fairly regularly updated. Yeah, four days ago uh, has been uh, updated, has support for Maui, Uno platform, Blazor, all these things. Avalonia is on the list, WinUI and UWP. So um, that's, that's awesome coverage right there. Check that out. Ooh, and they have a public website. Oh, look at this. oh, I want pictures. I want more animations. Oh, look at that. Ooh. All right. Just Ooh, had to wait sneaky. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, pin view. This one caught my attention. It's a recent, you know, just a singular control, but you need to, you need to type in your five digits. Um, I wonder if you can do different than five. Nope, there's a four. Maybe there's a six somewhere. Seems like six is the new four, right? Mm. Doesn't it seem like that's the case for pins? Um, so if you're looking for a control like this and you're, you're like, I don't really want to have to build that myself, which by the way, super easy to build this yourself, but why do the work if somebody else has done it for you? Um, and it's open source, so you can, of course, contribute back to it. So love to see little controls like this that just solve a very specific problem. All right, Shiny, another bump from Alan Ritchie. So if you are not familiar with Shiny, I highly recommend you check this out. Solves a lot of common problems, addresses a lot of common needs in your mobile applications, and some of which can be uh, a real pain to figure out. Alan's already figured it out. Don't, don't go, you know, breaking your noodle. Let Alan solve it for you, right? Um, at some point, Alan, we need to talk about that logo, though. I, it's, I mean, I understand it's like a lens flare thing, but. I feel like it was cool like three years ago. Not anymore. I know, Alan. But we love you, Alan, so it's okay. <laughs> you know, Canadians, what are you going to do? <laughs> Sorry, just kidding. Canadians are awesome. Uh, App Dynamics agent for Maui, another library. Let's go to the project website. What does App Dynamics do? Lots of things. So this is again a monitoring library and has been around for a long time. It's part of Cisco. That seems like a big deal. Oh, uh, it's done on purpose to annoy me. Thanks, Alan. Mm, can't wait to see you in person, buddy. Um, so another another one that still says Xamarin, but hey, guess what? Has Maui support now. So if you're using this and you're looking for that upgrade and, and have been waiting for it to get you out the door, there you go. Now available. And then plenty of time. 
Uh, Multi-select list view. I like this one because um, it is doing, again, one thing well. And list view kind of, you know, everybody's like, oh, you told us to go to collection view. And so list view, you know, we're never going to, you know, we're never going to use it, right? It's old news. Um, but hey, list view actually solves less needs than collection view, but also does what it does well. So um, if it solves your need, use it. Uh, so what this does is adds the ability for a different view cell type. Um, and you can uh, then do multi-select, single select. And I would imagine also kind of solves one of the uh, things that people hated about this view, which was, how do I change my selected, you know, background color, right? So that's that's how customers usually talk to me. They, they do the hand waving side to side, and then they give you the cartoony wine. I'm just kidding. They don't. I know. Maddie, don't believe me, Maddie. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see here. Hard crowd today, jeez. Uh, I'm, I'm laughing. The chat um, is laughing to themselves. Well, Dave and I were at, um, no, you weren't there. I was at Techerama. Mm -hmm. You weren't there. Who was I with? I oh, James there. Montemagno was there. And Dutch people, it was the one in the Netherlands, Dutch people, super polite, don't like <laughs> to interrupt you. Yeah. Very, very much straight shooters. Um, and so you make a joke in the middle of a talk in person and they don't laugh because they think it's rude to like laugh and interrupt your talk and laugh at you. But the whole way I do talks is I just carpet bomb bad jokes the whole time. And so it was <laughs> really, really bad. You keep like digging yourself into the hole and then your jokes get worse because you get a little nervous because you're like, oh my God, nobody thinks my jokes are funny. I really have to go all out. And then they're just bad jokes. So anyway. Yes, I've, I've had that experience twice and uh, yeah. It is, it is something else, but you get used to it. And then you, you know, then you hang out in the hallways with everybody afterwards and it's business as usual. They, you exactly. Know. Yeah. But yeah, it's during that session, you know, theater full of people not laughing at your jokes. Yeah. That's why you gotta, you gotta bring the friends yes. from America and or, you know, put them in the front row. So you have okay. somebody to, to riff on riff with. Okay. All right. Fabulous Maui controls marching forward F sharp library uh model view update pattern for maui and uh, of course built upon the history of the xamarin forms version so awesome to see tim and team continue to push this forward uh wanted to make sure you you saw the momentum if you've been waiting for this and if you know if mvu and f sharp is your is your bag uh check it out and certainly let tim know what you think and let us know what you think so that we can uh, consider how we can best support you there. All right. I know that I'm creeping into Michael's time, but I wanted to cover a few more things that came up in my Twitters uh, this week. I asked developers right here um, for your stories. What are you doing with .NET MAUI? And as a matter of fact, it was one of the first questions in the chat here. Is is this production ready? You know, the question of, is anybody actually using MAUI and, and in production? Guess what? They are. Um, so there are a lot of customers that we talk to. We don't have permission to shout their names from the rooftops. Actually, most of them, that's the case. Um, so I love it when we're able to get some great examples like these in our, in our Twitter feed in the public space and be able to talk about them. So I wanted to highlight them for you. Uh, this one just has some great animations and stuff. I love what they're doing with the uh, tab bar at the bottom there. It kind of has the, uh, the center button and, and the animations back and forth. Got a calendar control. That's all sweet. Uh, this one is a grocery store application for tracking inventory and the like. Uh, you know, one of the things that stands out to me immediately is the use of the material entry controls. And it also looks like it has some built in, um, what do we call those things? Steppers. So mm -hmm. some composite controls happening there. Maybe those are third party controls, don't know. Um, but you can do all of these things with controls out of the box as well. So using the fly out and Sadar, uh, you know, showcasing his wonderful Instagram photo there, I think. So, you know, when you are making the app and then sharing it with the world, as we do, you got you to gotta represent yourself in these things, right? Also, nobody's going to yell at you for using your own photo in a profile because you own the rights to it. So that's why we, that's why we developers put ourselves in our products. Uh, let's see here. Um, here is one climate campaign. This one's in the Android store coming soon to the iOS store. 
Um, so I'm eager to dig into this one and check it out because look how nice this is. Nice and clean design. Beautiful rounded corners on some stuff. Nice use of icons. Looks like we've got some kind of a, uh, was that like a bagel chart? What do we call those things? Half bagel chart? No. Rainbow chart. Because it's kind of like a rainbow. Arch chart? No. I? No. However, Maddie will refuse to use this app because she doesn't want to know what her CO2 footprint is for how many flights she takes on an annual basis. It's true. It's true. I don't want to know. A couple more. Uh, oh, yeah, this one. Gosh, can't pass this one by. So if you haven't been following Javier's progress on Figma and Aloha Kit, this is some pretty cool stuff. So you can take a Figma design. For example, this switch design he has here that has a, a Wi-Fi icon in the background, I guess. And then the switch goes back and forth on it. Using his desktop application, he's able to connect that to his Figma account. There's an API. Um, and it will generate the XAML using Aloha Kit. Aloha Kit uses the same handler architecture as Maui, um, but it is using um, all drawing to render the UI of those controls. So very cool stuff. And then you can grab this XAML, bring it into your application, and use it as is. So check that out. Very cool stuff. And then lastly, um, saw this animation. It's a repro of other animations, a remix, if you will. And so uh, good job to Anise Dean. Tweet to Anise. There you go. Um, so there's some cool animations done with uh, the animation framework inside of .NET MAUI. Um, probably some, some easing and some curves to be smoothed out there, but, you know, in short order was able to do a really nice job with that. So if that's something you're looking for in your application, maybe this, uh, repo here is something you can go explore and do a little learning. All right. That's what I got for today. However, you know what you didn't show? Oh, oh no. Let's do this. Yeah. Show my blog. So I did this blog. blog. Your blog doesn't blog. need people to see it. I know. So hey. I do have a blog, y'all. Um, and so I blogged about some things that Michael and I talked about, and he showed me how to use, I think, before the documentation was published, which he's he's about to do. I'm not going to steal all his thunder. But this generated quite a bit of activity on my Twitter stream and people viewing the blog post all about how you can use C Sharp alone with .NET Hot Reload and your Maui application and create a very nice, tight developer interloop. Um, I'm a huge fan. Anything that keeps me from having to hit the F5 a billion times during an hour of coding is a huge win. If I don't have to stop and restart for 45 minutes at a stretch, I know I'm being productive. So huge fan of this. Thank you, Michael, for your effort to make this a reality. And uh, with that, a lot of people behind this to make this all happen. That's all you, I mean, <laughs> pretty much. On the weekend too, like it's not like he actually works on this or anything. I know. Kidding. <laughs> so with that, why don't you uh, take it away, Michael, and show us what you got? Sure. Um, some of it's going to be based on on your blog, so you know, a little precursor there. I thought it was a good segue. I thought it was a good transition. Yeah, it is good. It is good. So. Um, so yeah, uh, so we're going to talk about the metadata update handlers today, um, and I've got a few slides I want to go through real quick, just as a background and a refresher on what is Hot Reload and all that kind of good stuff. So Maddie, if you can put the slides up. There Woo! we go. Yay. All right. Um, I can hide that little box. And my earbud is falling out. All right. We'll just go with one. So uh, all my details are up there. Uh, that didn't actually hide. There we go. Um, and they're at the end, and we'll post them up other places for you to take a look at. So the hot reload review. So when we talk about hot reload and we say just hot reload, we are actually talking about like three different technologies that we put together um, that hot reload different types of things. So in one aspect, we have the XAML hot reload, which reloads all of our XAML files, right? So we have 
XAML Hot Reload on Windows for hot reloading WPF, UWP, um, and then on mobile for hot reloading to Android and iOS um, in both Xamarin Forms and now in MAUI. So we've been able to do that for a while. That works really, really well uh, if you're using XAML for your, your UIs. Um, the way that Hot Reload works for uh, XAML Hot Reload is that as you're typing, as soon as the compiler figures out that everything you've got is good, it will package that up and ship off the updates to the application and your updates are, are visible. So it'll refresh the screen for you. Um, and that's based on the tooling that my team puts together, right? So it's, it's all based in Visual Studio. We also have recently just, just released the Blazor CSS Hot Reload. So in addition to um, XAML files, we can now Hot Reload CSS files that are in a MAUI Blazor hybrid app. So you can go in and take your app.css or even the scoped CSS files, the ones that are associated to a Razor file, make changes to those. Those will be rebuilt, shipped over to the application, and re-rendered appropriately inside of the Blazor app. Um, that happens on file save. So you actually have to hit file save for that, and that's how it gets handled and sent over. And again, our team is responsible for that with some help from uh, the the uh, was it ASP.NET and Blazor uh, teams. So kind of a little coordination there to get all that working. The one that I want to talk about today mostly is C Sharp Hot Reload, right? So anything that ends in a .cs file is what's going to be picked up by the C Sharp Hot Reload and the changes are going to be processed over. This is tied into that Hot Reload button that you see in the toolbar when you go into de uh, debug mode, right? The little fire icon. So as you make changes in your application, in your C-sharp files, you can, without having to save, just hit that button, all right? And all of your changes will be packaged up, shipped over to the application, and applied. This is all handled by the debugger. So uh, when you're in debug mode, it's all going to be sent over and, and processed. Then what happens is the debugger says, I did this thing. Now you need to go fix things up, right? Because all it did was apply the changes. It's not gonna refresh your screen. It's not gonna call any other additional methods or anything like that, because it just doesn't know about your app. So it's going to tell other systems that it's okay to go do things now. And it does that through the metadata update handler. So what is the metadata update handler? It is a public .NET API. So it's publicly available. It's, it's out there on the internet. You can look at the API and see what it is. It is an attribute that we apply at an assembly level that indicates types that should receive metadata update events. So as we apply things into, um, into the application, right? there's an agent that's running in your app that receives events from the, this debugger pipeline that says, hey, we need to do one of two things. We either need to clear cache or update application and you get sent over an array of types that have changed. This enables us to step up what is happening inside of your application as we're doing the hot reload. So already in uh, a .NET application, there are some uh, update handlers that we ship that will clear caches, for example, um, type caches, right? There's some things that we do in the .NET uh, lower levels that uh, when we update types, those caches need to be cleared out so that if you recreate that type, you know, the right things happen and, and states gone and things like that. So clear cache is called and then following that update application. And the way this works is that for each update handler that exists out there, we're going to call clear cache first. Then we're going to call update application. And they're going to get called in a specific order. If you implement a metadata update handler, you're guaranteed that your metadata update handler is going to be called after all of the system ones. We're going to run those first. So the hot reload cycle looks a little bit like this. We start with you making changes to your C-sharp file. Once you've made those changes, you click that button. That's the first red down arrow there. We apply those changes, or the debugger applies those changes. It then calls into all of the, the project system metadata update handlers to clear the cache. We call clear cache. All the caches are clear. Then we call update application. All the update applications are, are called. 
and you do all your crazy good stuff. And then this loop just keeps going, right? And so uh, as David had said earlier, we don't have to continually stop our application and then restart the debugger and the application in order to see changes. All you have to do is just keep hitting that hot reload button. So answered some of this already. Why do we want to do this? All right, so clear caching, unloading any stale data. If you've got things in your application that, you know, after you've reloaded, it needs to be reloaded, right? For instance, uh, maybe you're developing a database application. And you changed the underlying uh, structure of your data with a code first database. If you've changed that POCO, the, the plain old C shop object that's being retrieved from your database, you may need to reset your database. All right, that's a great spot for you to hook into things like clear cache, unload that old data, reload new data. All right, or even just recreating your database. Maybe you've made changes that you just, you know, want to reset, you know, just clear out all of your database query cache, et cetera, or possibly requery web APIs if they've changed, right? So we can actually hot reload a web API while you're debugging your application at the same time. So you could be doing both. You may need to just, you know, requery it. An application update, this is more about the user interface and some of your business logic, et cetera. So a lot of times you're going to use this to reinitialize any of your views, your view models, uh, reset uh, any state that's involved in the UI. Any services that you have that you need to reinitialize, uh, you can do here as well. And as David said in his blog talks about, is reloaded any coded UI views, right? Now we're not dealing with XAML, right? We've only got C Sharp, so we can't use the XAML hot reload. We've got to go totally with C Sharp hot reload. And that's a great spot to do it. One of the interesting things is we've been in conversations with the Maui team on how do we help, um, support this better. And one of the things that, that we keep on coming back to is we just don't know enough about your applications, about the the way that you're developing coded UIs to be able to do this automatically. But I'd love to hear, you know, if anybody is doing this and how you're going to be uh, using it in ways that we can improve this for you. So how do you do this, right? It's actually relatively simple. So all you need to do is add a new class to your application, right, directly in your app. And it can be just a public static class. So in this case, you can see we've, we've created one that's called hot reload service. We've added an attribute to this class, or at least in this file, right? That's an assembly level attribute. So it's called metadata update handler. And it's of the type, well, it takes in a type of, and then the type that we're, we're defining in this file. So the hot reload service, right? So that applies to that. And that now tells all of the systems in place uh, when we're, we're doing hot reload that we need to call this class when doing a hot reload. We have the two methods on here. Um, so we define the class as a public static, but the method is an internal static, all right? So it hides it from your public API. So you could actually ship this if you wanted to. I don't recommend it. Uh, that's why we've got the pound if around this particular sample here, that it only applies to .NET 6 or greater and only if you're in debug mode. So you can define clear cache or, and you can do both of these in the same file or in multiples, uh, the update application method. And in this case, this particular example, uh, which I think is similar to what uh, David has on the blog too, is uh, we just define an event, um, in this case, like clear cache event or the update application event. And as long as we're receiving a, a call into clear cache or update application that has types available, then we're gonna invoke that event handler. So this makes the the, um, the the hot reload service that I have here relatively simple. I don't have to go modify it. And I can just hook into these anywhere I need to in my application. So let me show you how that works. So I have a application here, um, a demo one, obviously. Uh, and this particular application, it's a Maui app. So it's a straight Maui app. It's not Maui Blazor or anything like that. Um, but I uh, swiped this from the, uh, what's that called? Community Toolkit, Maui, uh, shoot, now I can't remember what it was. Uh, I want to make sure I say what it is, too. Um, David, help me. 
I'll look nope. it up. Keep going. Okay. Um, I changed all the namespaces, so now I don't have that to help me either. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll, I'll remember it uh, and, and uh, give that project credit. Um, oh, actually, you know what? I've referenced it. It is Community Toolkit Maui Markup. There oh, we go. Maui. Oh, wait, there's Maui a... Markup. We, we made markup for C Sharp Markup? I thought it was just part um, of it, but that's cool. I never do yeah. C Sharp UI, so. I'm a XAML fan, old school, so. Yeah, I usually use XAML too, but playing around in the C Sharp markup world is, is kind of interesting. Plus it helps me figure out what's going on with, with uh, Hot Reload some too, so. Um, but yeah, it's the Community tool Toolkit Maui markup, and it's the their sample right out of there. I just grabbed it and changed namespaces so it all worked in, in this particular demo project that I have. So uh, let me just uh, run the application. Uh, oh, it actually is already running. Let me stop the application. This uh, and nothing up my sleeve. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sure right? it's going. <laughs> right, so we can see XAML Hot Reload is stopped down there. So I'm going to start this up again. Where'd my mouse go? All right, F5. There we go. There we go. This is going to take a little bit, so I'm going to have to talk over this. So in the sample, it's all C Sharp UI. There is no XAML involved here whatsoever. Everything is built through code, uh, which makes it really easy for me to show you guys how certain things are going to work with C Sharp Hot Reload and some things aren't, or at least they're going to be a little bit, um, you might have to change your code some in order to get C Sharp Hot Reload to work well uh, with the metadata update handlers. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is one thing I can do is I have a shared project here. That includes my C Sharp Hot Reload service, which is exactly what I was showing you in the um, in the slides. Except I've only implemented the update application here, right? Because that's the only one I need to to actually handle. Because I'm just going to uh, manipulate UI stuff at this point. Now, I'll just wait for this app to start, and hopefully, it's going to start on the right screen. Are there any differences between platforms? Or can I expect if it works on Android, it should work on Windows, for example? Should being the very operative word. Yes. Yeah. So um, if it's Maui, it should work across all the Maui supported platforms. If it doesn't, please file a, a bug through help. Um, what is that? Help send you back to, to a problem. Yeah. I just go to Teams problem. chat Michael Cummings. Is that not the way I'm supposed to do Yeah, you can do that, that too. Uh, you know, my Twitter handle, uh, email, whatever. I'll gladly fill in the form for you. <laughs> That's actually not true. But thanks for saying. Currently, though, .NET Hot Reload is not working with iOS devices on Windows. That is a Hot known reset. bug that's going to be fixed. Yes. Just FYI. But we got it. We're fixing it. We're, we'll, we'll get there. Now my icon showed up. Where'd it, where'd it go? Okay, there it is. All right. So this app is really simple. It has uh, two screens. So the top stories, which is just a list of of stories, um, actually three screens, because I can click on a, one of these, and then it will open it up and have a web view here with, there we go. Okay. Um, and for some reason, the internet's slow today, so it's going to take a while to come in. And then as I come back, we also have a settings page with a list of the number of top stories, or not a list, a uh, field with the number of top stories to fetch. Right. So if I wanted to test out how reload, let's say I just want to change what the the some text is on that settings page. So I can come into the settings state page here. And I can see, all right, I have a label, the text, the top stories. I want to say it's the top X stories, right? Now, this is C Sharp code. Um, there's, there's no XAML to do. It's not going to automatically make the change for me. And if I click here and let me go into the settings page, right? We can see top stories to fetch. It still says that even though I've clicked the X. Now, I need to hit this button, the hot reload button. And when I do, that's going to go out to... Uh, the debugger. The debugger is going to gather all the information and tell me that. So 
here my log underneath the output window hot reload log. We can see that my session has started and I'm sending updates to the running application and that my updates were applied successfully. Yay, party, all right? And then we have this other one that changes were successfully applied. So the first one is actually coming from the debugger. The second one is coming from our code. Oh, that was nice. Um, <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> That's why they pay me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, the second message is actually coming from the, from our system saying that we have successfully run the metadata update handlers, if there are any out there. If I go take a look at the application now, though, it still says top X stories to fetch. What happened? Well, we didn't write any metadata update handlers to actually reload this page. However, all we really need to do is reload the page, right? So as long as you can navigate, and don't mind navigating, right? I can navigate off that page, reload this page, and it's now reloaded with my change. All right, very simple, very easy. But what happens for things like the main page? What if I wanted to, to change something on this page? So the way that this works, all right, at least in how this application works, App Shell, right, when it's when it's created through dependency injection, right, it is fed a news page and then that adds that item to the shell itself. It never recreates that page. Even if you go to settings and back, that page is going to stay uh, in memory. All right. If we take a look at news page, its constructor, all right, creates all of the content in the constructor. So hot reload is going to work, right? It's going to apply the changes. The, the C sharp code is going to change, but if the constructor never runs again, or if there's no way for you to rebuild this content, then you're not going to see the changes in your application. And this is where we need to sometimes just massage how we're developing a little bit to helpfully support hot reload and be able to enable that in our application. All right. So to, so to do that, what I want to do in news page is kind of hook into the hot reload at this point and recreate this content, all right, this whole section here, when I have a, a hot reload event come in, right? So what I'm going to do is I already have this code written because I did not want to have it not work when I got to this point. Uh, all right, so I've got a new constructor down here that I'm going to enable, and I'll talk through this code. All right, so what I've done is I've extracted out, oops, my way. I've extracted out the whole content creation into an internal method called load view. So load view just generates this content. It's exactly the same as it was before, except that there's one piece missing off of here, which was that um, this assign out refresh view, right? Because refresh view is a read only variable. So we just left it in here, right? So the new constructor just has the basic at the top, this dispatcher, uh, the the events, uh, subscriptions, adding of the toolable item, ran into this problem when I had initially just taken everything out and put it into the load items, kept on adding toolbar items every single time I refreshed. Um, so be careful there. Um, the constructor now just calls load view, right, at the right spot, and then it calls assign um, correctly, you know, because of read only. Now here is where I've hooked up into that event that's in the, the hot reload service. So we've attached the update application event. We receive a list of types. Important note here, you must be on the main thread when you do any UI stuff, right? So if you're going to recreate code or recreate uh, UI elements, make sure you dispatch out to the UI thread before calling any methods that do that. Um, you will run into exceptions, All right? It's gonna fail zoom on. zoom in a little bit for me, please? Just what was that? Zoom in a little bit. Zoom in. Really, you want me to remember where the zoom in button is? She's like almost 30, her eyes are going, you know, she just can't see uh, Control and scroll. <laughs> right, there you go, there you go. 
Yeah. Is that good for you now? That's great. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. No problem. All right. So in inside of this uh, dispatcher.dispatch, which gets assigned to the main thread in Maui, um, we call load view. So that should go down here and just reload all of this uh, UI for us. Right now, since I made code changes, going to save that. Uh, I don't want to save these, so uh, yeah, what the heck? I'll save those. Now, I can click how reload here, right? Uh, I made changes that it can't support. So this is a message box that you might see um, when you do something in your code that we can't hot reload, right? So it's going to tell us that we need to rebuild and apply these changes and move on, right? So you can just click the button. That's going to stop our application. It's going to actually rebuild the app for us and then start the debugger again. Really helpful. Did you, my muted, did you have um, debug uh, compiler directive wrapped around the hot reload service? Like where would you advise doing that? Um, yeah, I had it wrapped around the whole hot reload service. Okay. So yeah. Um, and that is probably where I would suggest doing that. Calling into it, you'd have to wrap it on each of the um, events too. Yeah. So you could, if you if you're doing it the event way, you could also just leave the events there and then just um, uh, conditional compile the um, clear cache and update application calls. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the attribute you want to do that too because you don't want to try and to attach to it. All right, now it's trying to start the app and. It's thinking about it. It's thinking about it. Yep. It takes a second. All my 2 p.m. notifications just went off. Sorry if you heard them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Windows. Right, come on. I think I know who you could talk to about this. Yeah. Hey, is this All public right. preview you're on or is this internal? Uh, Public. Cool. So people can just like do this right now? You can just do this right now. Yep. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's on still Windows. thinking. You can on do Windows. Yes, on Windows. Yep. Mac. One day soon, we may or may not have seen a demo of some basic hot reloading .NET hot reloading work on Mac, but may or may not confirm nor deny. Right. right. <laughs> wow, your internet right, hates you and everything. It's the office. And, you know what? I'm wired in too, so I don't know what the heck it's doing. Oh. So while it's thinking, I'm going to go and talk about this story data template. Ooh. So story data template is actually used to uh, create each of the line items, right? So it creates a grid and defines all this cool stuff that's in here. Now, uh, since story data template is not actually news page, right? But it does get created uh, through this load view somewhere down in here, right? So load view creates something, something else creates um, the story data template. So hopefully if I make modific changes here, then you know it's going to be shown when I reload the window, right? So I can change this and say, well, I don't want a 16 font size. I need bigger because you know when when Maddie sees this, she's gonna you know throw a fit. That's mm, true. <laughs> yes. See, nice and nice and small text. So I want to make these bigger so Maddie can see them. So I click the hot reload button. And of course, it's going to hide my application. We come back. And did it not do it? Come on. Does the does the uh, XAML Live preview pick up your window and show it? There it goes. Ooh. The first click must have just been changing to that window, not actually clicking the button. So once I actually click the button, it changed it. Now ugh, all my text is is cut off. I need to make the row bigger. So if I come in here and my mouse keeps on disappearing. Wait, did you catch Dave's question though? Would this work with live preview? Does this work with live preview? Um, well, I don't know. Let me see. Debug uh, Windows. Debug. De it's not lower that right one. corner of your window. It's, it's over here. Yeah, oh, it's, it's already up. up. Sorry.
Gosh, it your computer isn't having a fit. Nice. Nice. But Control scroll does not work on oh, my wait, preview. On, on. That is I a I got to change this to fit. Sorry, I'm talking over you. You're also fine. control scroll. Control scroll all the things. No, it doesn't yeah. work on my preview, I thought. <laughs> so yeah, so there it is. Now if I go here and... Right, I was... Where's, I thought I moved over there already. Okay. Change that to 40. And then click the button. Or hit save if you want to, if you're a save person. You have to turn on that, don't you? You have to you yeah. have to check this box, hot reload on file save. Which should be on by default for everybody in the world, in my opinion. <laughs> but nobody asked me. <laughs> All right. So yep, that changed. I'm now seeing my full text. Isn't that beautiful? Right. Mm. Then I have to make this bigger. All right, so I jump from 16 to 24. So let's go from 13 to 20. Hit the button again. And we should see that flash. There we go, as it reloads the screen. And just so you know, that's not doing something funky. Here it is in real life, right? So <laughs> we actually get to see all of this. Now, last thing I want to show real quick is I went to try to do a change to the news page um, constructor, right? If I try and make any changes here, for example, if I try and change this text settings to say options, right? Yeah, like I said before, it's in the constructor. News page never gets recreated. So it's never gonna change that in the UI that I'm looking at right now. Um, but I was able to get it to do a little bit if I go into app shell, right? And instead of doing the standard constructor, I was like, well, I should be able to hook into the update application event inside of the app shell. And if my type that comes in, and let me highlight this correctly. All right. If I come in and hook into that event, and then if my type contains a news page, I should be able to get a new instance of it because it is a transient um, object inside of the dependency injection, and then add that to my items. This part works. Today I figured out the next part doesn't. So I'm going to talk to the Maui team about how to write correctly do this so that we can recreate the main page. Um, but items are removed doesn't work correctly, but the rest of this works quite well. Um, the one thing you'll also notice is that my new constructor here passes in the services instead of news page. So instead of using um, dependency injection to pass in the new instance through the constructor because I need to recreate it, if we pass in services, I can then use the, you know, get required service, you know, this line here, right? Which will always get me a new service because through dependency injection, we didn't add it as a singleton, we added it as a transient, so it recreates it, all right? So, Maddie, wow. do you have questions? I do. This is cool. This is cool. I mean, like, it's fancy. I don't know. I don't really do C-sharp UI, so I never really thought about these things. But then, like, it's nice. And the C-sharp UI yeah. is pretty clean, the markup stuff. Um, it the is. chat's excited, so that's cool. Um, let's see what questions we have. One was, oh, Rainier, who is awesome, who I got to meet when I was at Tekarama. Um could you decorate that code, like your load save, I imagine is what he was talking about. Could you decorate that in a debug directive or um, load load view, show whatever the load thing was? Um, or as someone else had asked about async await to make sure it all stays on like one thread. I don't know. What about that? Um, so when, all right, let me answer two questions all at the same time. Okay. So the first one, should we decorate it? Yes. So as David asked that pretty much that same question, what we can do in the hot reload service is um, instead of decorating this whole file, what we can do here is decorate this, right? And then also decorate just this piece. Ooh. Um, 
get on the right line there. All right. So now what will happen is that your event will stay in your code, but it will never actually get called. And this way, you don't have to change anything in your views because they can just attach to this event and detach properly. And but nothing happens and you've removed the update application that actually it gets called and you remove the attribute which tells the rest of the .NET framework that this um, this thing actually exists. Cool. All right. All right. Um, what was the second one? I got the first um, one. What's the right? Well, actually, there's there's kind of two parts to this one, too. Have we tested this with multi-threaded apps at all? Um, oh, that's fun. Uh, stay on the UI thread? I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's the easiest way I can think of. Um, right now, um, because we are operating through the debugger, we come in on a background thread all the time, right? Mm. So when you get called on update application, we're calling you from a background thread. This enables you to do a lot of operations on the background thread without having to uh, jump off of it. So and because we're, we're we're hot reloading. We're just hot reloading. This isn't strictly for UI. We hot reload all the things. So we don't want to force you onto the UI thread. A, it's going to block up your UI. We don't want to, you know, prevent that from happening. Yep. And we allow you to switch to the UI thread to do the UI things that you need to do when you're hot reloading. But we're open to suggestions. So if you've got certain scenarios or you've got an idea on how things can be better, let me know. Cool. And your Twitter's up there and earlier in the um, thing, you had also put up your email. So that's cool. And yep. then, all right, one last question and then we'll let you go. Does C Sharp Hot Reload support with C Sharp attributes changes? Can you do C Sharp attribute changes for C Sharp Hot Reload with C Sharp Hot Reload? Uh, so that's a tricky question. The answer is yes, but it needs we need to support something called reloadable types which is something that we're, we're working on um and well actually we've got most of the infrastructure already in place it's just adding things on the tooling side which is my team to be able to support reloadable types through the rest of the infrastructure right. so the debugger handles reloadable types automatic uh, already all right so so the roslyn team and the debugger team they've got reloadable types working it rewrites that type um the next step for us to fully support it is to add into the metadata update handlers um, the capability for reloading those types. So um, it's a little bit more work for us, but um, redoing the, the attributes is definitely something that, that I think um, we can get to. Cool. Just yeah, don't know Yeah, and you'll notice over time, C Sharp Hot Reload supports more and more things, both on like Windows and on, on the mobile stuff. So, for example, for mobile, you couldn't do lambdas up until recently, up until .NET 7, which is next week. So right. that's exciting. Um, static field stuff, new classes. I don't know. There's a lot of things. Anyways, thank you, everybody, for joining. I know we're a little bit over, so thank you for sticking around to the end. Hopefully, we'll see you Tuesday at .NET Conf, Tuesday through Thursday. Um, and, yeah, definitely reach out. Let us know what your thoughts are and if you try these things. and. Uh, Give us your feedback. So thank you, Michael. Thank you, Dave. Of thank course. You. Thanks, Thanks Michael. It was great. See you guys soon. Bye. Yeah.